Excellent. Welcome, everyone. We'll get started in just a minute. Thank you for joining us today. All right. For those of you already on the call, feel free to ask us any questions. I think there is also a chat button there. If you want to interact with myself or with Wesley throughout today's presentation, we'll get any questions that you ask over to Wesley uh, throughout today's event as well. All right. Without further ado, let's get this started. Um, I'm AJ. Thank you guys for joining us today for another VMware Tonsa webinar, Research to Backlog in 36 Hours, Planning and Executing Successful On-Sites. And today, we have a friend to the program, Wes Chu. Hey, Wesley, how are you doing today? I'm well. Thanks. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Um, but before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. We'd love to keep this as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions for us, um, ask a question using that questions tab, and we'll do our best to answer them throughout today's presentation. And what I see here also is a chat tab. So if you don't want to ask a question, but if you want to just leave us a comment, um, use that chat function as well just to communicate with us, um, and we'll communicate back. So without further ado, hand this off to you, Wesley. All right. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. And good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming. I'm Wesley Chu, and I'm sharing with y'all some tips and tricks on making the most of an on-site user research visit. But first, a little bit about me. I am a computer security professional turned software engineer turned product manager. I graduated from the US Air Force Academy, became an Air Force officer, and have been super lucky to have co-founded multiple grassroots movements to modernize the life or death mission critical software that my fellow service members rely on to this very day. But we didn't do it alone though. We had the help of world-class consultants from VMware Tanzu Labs, now into Broadcom. After leaving the Air Force, I've joined labs myself and I'm now paying it forward with the US Marine Corps Software Factory, also known as McSwift. Now, why am I excited to share this framework with y'all? I want to talk about my most recent project, the My Career app. I got the opportunity to help reimagine how Marines decide their next assignments. Marines have essentially a guidance counselor called a monitor that decide what their next assignment will be. The goal of these monitors is to pair up Marines to assignments and jobs all around the world that match the Marines' career, family, and personal preferences. to so hopefully help that Marine decide to serve longer in the Marine Corps, extend their contract, and keep retention numbers high. But as you can see on these pictures, that whole process was originally pretty low tech. Unless you're lucky, you typically have one person, one monitor in charge of making these assignments decisions for each vocation or career specialty in the entire Marine Corps. So remember like when we were kids and like a teacher to 30 students ratio was, I thought it was not the best, but we're talking about like one to thousands, if not tens of thousands ratio here. And the monitors knew they couldn't possibly know what every Marine wanted if they just stayed in their main office in Virginia. So in their own words, it's the in-person, one-on-one, kneecap-to-kneecap conversation with that Marine that matters the most to get that Marine to stay. So to try to connect with as many Marines as possible, the monitors traveled to Marine Corps bases worldwide for several days at a time to make it easier for Marines to speak with them. But there were a lot of pains with these trips. For one, getting the word out that the monitor was around was pretty difficult. That information was not shared out in a standardized way. Sometimes a Marine would receive an email about it, or they'd see a flyer in the on-base grocery store, or they'd just hear about it from a coworker. So you pretty much had to be a little lucky, a little nosy, or have some good supervisors to know about this opportunity to speak with them. But even if you did learn about it, sometimes the event changes at the last minute because maybe the venue had to go under construction or the Wi-Fi wasn't working in the venue so the mo or the monitor's flight got delayed. So it's hard to let everyone know about those changes. And so sometimes a Marine would show up at the venue, see that nobody's here and ask, oh man, where did you go? And they just leave in frustration. But let's say that the monitor and the Marine actually do connect and see each other. Well, remember that one to thousands ratio? There could be hundreds of people ahead of you in line, kind of like in Disneyland, except it's not the happiest place on earth, sadly. And 
So the wait times can be as long as an entire eight hour workday. But you know, Marines, they have jobs to do and they can't afford to wait that long. So they just don't get the chance. So these miners have this impossible task of somehow keeping wait times as short as possible, get through these hundreds of people that are waiting without sacrificing the quality time with each Marine. And the monitors, they have to record each Marine's preferences and needs and somehow remember what happened in the conversation weeks or months later when matching them with assignment. Like, I will say, like, hats off to these monitors for working between a rock and a hard place all day, every single day. And so we sought to fix that. And that involved a lot of on-site user research trips. And spoiler alert, the MyCure app that we built helped the Marine Corps achieve an all-time historic high for first-term re-enlistment and retention numbers this year. And we achieved that with the framework that I'm about to show you today. So I'll describe the framework that we developed and, des and describe how it helped me and my remote team make the most out of our in-person research trips. I'll be sharing the challenges we encountered at first, the framework that we created in response, and how we applied it to our use case. So to begin, I want to first talk by talking about the challenges that we experienced at first. Let's go back to a time in September 2023. We took off on our very first research trip for the micro app. Our stakeholders invited us into their space to let us witness all this chaos for ourselves. We had spoken to our users remotely before, but never had the chance to meet them in person. And we were really excited for the experience to, to see their workflows firsthand, to build empathy with their problems and needs and figure out how we can help. Unfortunately, at the end of this trip, our outputs didn't quite match the effort that we put in. We lacked focus. We didn't have specific goals on what we wanted to accomplish or learn while there. As a result, we ended up duplicating each other's work and accidentally asking people the same things. Like there was one time where we spent nearly an entire afternoon asking people about a specific portion of their workflow, only to find out that someone else on our team asked about the same exact thing this morning. And because we lacked focus on what information to gather, we learned a lot of things that weren't relevant, or we learned things that we already knew. And we didn't learn about the things that mattered the most to us or to the level of detail that we needed. And despite all of that data, we couldn't explain what we learned in a way that our stakeholders could understand. In fact, we didn't quite know what to present to them. And the details we gave them were watered down or things that they already knew. At the end of the day, although we did a lot of research, we couldn't articulate the value that we actually gained from the trip. With that background information, I also want to talk about the organizational challenges that we faced at the time. I also want to point out that, you know, every organization has different problems and priorities. In our case, McSwift was essentially a small startup without the resources of a large organization. So cost was one of our leadership's biggest concerns. We didn't have the luxury to have these potentially expensive trips if we didn't have a way to prove that they were worth it. So how could we convince our stakeholders that these trips are worth the cost and manpower? Allow me to show you. I would describe the changes we made in four overall themes. Define your areas of focus. Develop a clear set of norms. Have a clear itinerary. And synthesize early and often. Since my goal is for you to be able to take this and implement it in your own teams in some way, I'll walk you through some examples. First, define your areas of focus. First, we got to set the goals of this trip and what we want to accomplish. What's an example? Let's take these two. We wanted to measure how our product performed differently during a certain event after we made some changes. And during that event, we wanted to get feedback from a subset of users that we haven't heard from yet. With these goals, now everyone knows why we're going on this trip in the first place and keep in mind what we're trying to accomplish. And then we define anti-goals. Now, what's that you ask? I'll show you an example. Since the vast majority of feedback we received so far came from a certain set of users we've already worked with a lot, we chose to not focus as much in as much time and energy on them. That was our anti-goal. 
So why are anti-goals important? Because let's be honest, everything is important. But we are merely human with limited resources and time. We can't do everything. And rather than try in vain to do it all, let's just figure out what's most important and focus on just those. Then call out what we're living or willing to live without. And that helps us focus our energy where it really counts. Next, determine with the team what specific actions or activities do y'all want to accomplish uh, to support these overall goals. Your mileage may vary depending on what the purpose of your onsite is. In my case, we did onsites most commonly to one, observe firsthand our users' workflows, and two, measure in person how well our software solution performs in our users' real world environments. So let me show you the goals that we just talked about here. And with that, I commonly use this space to define what questions we want to answer during our research or determine what quantitative and qualitative metrics we want to gather. Things like, how long does someone wait to check in for their appointment? Or are users still experiencing those long load times when initially opening the app? Or in the second goal, how does this subset of users actually use the app that we built versus how we expected them to? For example, are they using the feature that we just released or are they using any workarounds? And if so, why? This helps the team know exactly what we're looking for and avoid asking our users random questions. Next, develop a clear set of norms. A team that acts and responds with a unified front exudes professionalism and competency to their users and stakeholders. Think of this time as like to find your team's get out of jail free cards. This is where you ask questions like, how do we respond when someone makes a feature request to one of us? Or what do we do when someone says there's a bug? What do we do when an outage occurs? Or how should we respond when someone tries to strong arm us? For example, during a norming session, we in intentionally decided to standardize how we respond and track bug reports while we're on site. These were the steps that we came up with together have them show you what specific steps they did to run to the problem, determine how often the bug occurs, see if it's just them experiencing the issue or if it's multiple people, and of course, thank them for reporting it and share it in a designated internal channel somewhere to raise awareness to the team and to allow product managers like myself to prioritize. Another norm that we established was if any teammate felt like they were being strong-armed for a feature request, we decided to always redirect them to the product manager and they'll handle it. I got you. Your teammates are not the only people you wanna create norms though. For example, we also set norms with our stakeholders and external partners. We figured out what, we, what they wanted to know and how often they wanted to hear from us and where they wanted us to share those updates and what type of trip report they expected. Set those expectations now before you travel so that there are no surprises. Setting norms with your team and stakeholders helps y'all know how to respond to situations behind a unified front. Next, have a clear itinerary. Now, every trip has one, but I wanna help you break it down a bit more. This is more than just like drawing out a timeline, scheduling out the day. This is also for y'all to determine things like who's responsible for what tasks during the trip, who is bringing XYZ materials, and who's communicating with our sponsor while visiting. So for my case, we had folks flying in from Denver, Las Vegas, Austin, Boston, San Jose at different times, and we were heading to a Marine Corps base. So we had to clarify who's flying in when? Do they have a right to the hotel? Uh, how do we gain access to the military base? Who is meeting us outside of the office for visiting? Who's responsible for tracking metric A and who for metric B? who is responsible for interviewing people for feedback, and so on and so forth. Remember our first point about trip goals? This is your chance to call out who is responsible for what, for what someone is doing in support of those goals. Like one time we had to divide into two smaller groups across two venues. I was in charge of one group, and because we were with a subset of users we haven't spoken to yet, it made sense to be responsible for interviewing them, getting their feedback. And one of my coworkers, Katie, she was in charge of the other group. And though 
And so they prioritize the other goal. Now, we're not trying, we're not saying that you have to rigidly dictate every single minute of the day and you must follow this schedule. The intent of this trip is to make sure everyone's on the same page on where they need to be and when, how to get there, who's responsible for what, and what to do if something goes wrong. And not only that, but to also figure out any dependencies or boogeymen that we should mitigate for. Okay, now that all the logistics and all the pre-planning are out of the way, let's switch gears to what to do while you're traveling. The one habit that helped me and my team the most is intentionally synthesizing early and often. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the term synthesizing, I want you to think about the last time you went to an event where you met some new faces. How much of the conversation do you remember? And let's be honest, like, do we remember their names? I sometimes forget too. It's okay. But synthesizing is the act of taking all the things that you learned and all the things that happened and putting it into a format that will make sense to anyone the next morning. When I'm at an onsite, we can each speak to like 10 or more users a day. We're trying to make the most of their time and our time. And there's a lot of context switching. We take notes the best we can, but this is an example of what a page of my notebook looks like after just one interaction. Now in the moment, these notes make sense to me, but only to me. And all that knowledge I gained, it lives in just my head. My teammates don't know about it. And the longer I wait to synthesize these notes and share it out so the rest of the team knows, the more details will be lost. If I wait until later or after the trip to gather my notes and thoughts, draw insights from it, make decisions, I'm probably not gonna remember the full details or the full nuances that these notes try to communicate. Or I may not even remember what on earth these notes even mean at all. And now multiply that with the other five people in the team doing the same exact thing. When we returned from our very first research trip, nobody could confidently remember in full detail all of what we learned on that trip. And if your last day on site was on a Friday, yeah, good luck remembering after coming back from the weekend. I'm data dumping for sure. So the key point here is to review your individual notes as a team early and often. So here's an example of how you might run a synthesis. First, have everyone write down their notes from that day into sticky notes, but one thought per sticky. Second, have one person in the group share one sticky note and put it on a board or a wall, a whiteboard or somewhere that everyone can see. If anyone has a similar thought, group their stickies together. Next, our goal is to discuss and turn our individual understandings into a shared understanding across the group. Now, why do we do that? Because you and your teammate may have seen the same thing, but both of you might have interpreted it differently. Discussing your takeaways helps y'all understand both of your perspectives and uncover key details and insights that either of you may have missed. And if you can't come to an agreement, it's an opportunity to take an action item, uh, such as, hey, we're gonna look into this topic a little more tomorrow, try to get more data. Or we can say, hey, I see the differences in opinion, but we have other priorities to tackle. This one's not as important, let's table it for now. We'll get back to it later. Another example is, you know, you saw something your teammates didn't, so you just need to catch them up. Bring the individual perspectives and insights help the team gain a holistic understanding of what happened. After discussion, decide on a short name for each cluster of the sticky notes, and then we will move on to the next person and repeat until you've discussed and grouped every sticky. And would you look at that? Ta-da, we've identified common themes and create a cohesive narrative that everyone understands and can use to refresh their memory later. And in that moment, you also get hints on how well you're tackling your goals in that day. For subsequent days, take this board you already made and synthesize on top of it. Add your notes from day two, perhaps in a different color. I chose gray just uh, for this demonstration. And as the team gathers more research, you add more evidence and weight to the trends you saw yesterday or the last time, or you find new ones. It is important to try to synthesize at least every single day. 
it's much easier to parse through one day's notes at a time versus the entire trip at the very end. So by the end of that, you'll have an already organized artifact with easy to communicate insights from which to draw conclusions and make decisions. I'll show you a real world example. This is what one of our boards looked like on our very first day. And this is what it looked like in the end. Look at all of these insights, so satisfying. And this sets us up for what I'm gonna talk about next. Now, now that we've gone over the four parts of the framework, I want to bring y'all back to the micro app that I mentioned in the start. Let's go to March 2024. We went on our fifth research trip. This time, it was a five-day research trip to stress test what we built so far. If things went well, our users would adopt the micro app for use in their regular workflow and regular day-to-day -day operations, which is a huge deal for us as a team. And it was also a huge deal for the Marine Corps Software Factory because micro was its first app that was fully homegrown, built by Marines for Marines. So you can imagine there was some skepticism in the process from outsiders. And if we succeeded, we'd be handing McSwift its first major success story that would demonstrate its value add to the Marine Corps. Now, the scale of this event that we were going to was way larger than any other event that we've been to before. Previous My Career test had been no longer than two days long and only serv serviced a few hundred Marines at a single venue. But this time, several thousands of Marines would be using it simultaneously for five days across seven venues on two Marine Corps bases located 45 minutes apart. And keep in mind, at this point, the My Career team had only been around for five months. And due to the sheer scale coming towards us, we chose to break into two groups to cover more ground. So we had six teammates traveling and another two were supporting us remotely. We didn't want to repeat the mistakes of our very first research trip. And this time we had the framework. We define our top goals in yellow and anti goals in red, extra details in gray. And we set the specific questions we wanted to answer. We started out by dumping everything under the sun that we'd love to measure and learn about and then highlighted the ones that were most important to us so that everyone knew what the focus was and what the priority was. And then we set our norms. We knew that we had to be efficient, professional, and united during the trip that would be pretty critical to the product's future and McSwift's future. So we were very intentional about norming and practicing how we'd respond to certain situations we believe would happen, like someone asking for a feature some are reporting an outage or a bug and so on and so forth. And we set a clear itinerary. Here's just a small subset of it, uh, just to keep things simple. We made sure everybody had all the information they needed at their fingertips to know exactly what they had to do, what tools they had available, where they needed to be and when, and what to do when the boogeyman showed up or something wrong along the way and who's responsible for what. All of this allowed us to minimize the inherent chaos of settling into a rhythm when we got there and harnessing and focusing our maximum mental energy on the research itself. And we synthesized each and every day. And believe me, we were pretty tired at the end of each day. And it was really tempting to skip a day of synthesis because we really needed the rest. And we're saying, hey, we can remember the next day. But we rallied and made sure that everything we learned and jotted down got organized and shared in the full fidelity, uh, full fidelity details that we had. And we made sure that what we saw got locked into our collective long-term memory. And boy, was it worth it. Because this time, this research trip, it turned out completely differently than our very first one. We worked a similar amount of hours. We interviewed a ton more people than before. And this time, by the last day, we had a set of concrete metrics and data points that our stakeholders cared about and understood. We learned that 820 more Marines showed up this year compared to last year. And 1,069 more Marines got to speak with their monitor. And what took monitors about 17 minutes to interview a Marine went down to just seven. And wait times used to be as long as eight hours. And we shrank that to about two. And with those data points, we had a cohesive narrative 
on my career's performance that every teammate can explain and that our stakeholders can understand. And we had a clear understanding on my career's impact and where it excelled. Finally, the team and our stakeholders understood together where to improve the micro app now versus later. And with that, I wanted to end with one last note that knowing what to build is hard for any team. Going on site can be crucial in getting a true firsthand understanding of the domain you're working in. However, without proper preparation, it can also leave you with more questions than answers. But whenever you do decide to travel, I hope this framework can help you gather information in a high quality way, draw valuable insights from the trip, and unveil what your next move should be. And speaking of next move, I realized I'm gonna go back a slide because I forgot to talk about one last thing. So remember how everyone was on the same page and knew exactly where the app should improve? Uh, basically, one of the biggest things, did we achieve user adoption? Yes, we did. Our users and stakeholders trusted that despite my career's imperfections, that they'll con the imperfections, they said, we're gonna continue using this in our real world uh, environment for on and on. And that was a huge win for us. That was the win that we needed. And because we already synthesized everything and knew where we had to improve, it was super easy for me to just prioritize what to work on next, write stories in the backlog with designs and have it ready for engineers to work on within 36 hours of starting our return travel. That's it. Okay. So let's see, but whenever, yeah, whenever you do decide to travel, I hope this framework can help you gather information in a high quality way, draw valuable insights from the trip and unveil what our next move should be. Thank you for stopping by. I'll now open the floor for questions. Great, thanks Wesley for the great presentation and what a journey, right? Just looking at how some of those first meetings went without the, the framework that you had and then how they were able to develop to save so much time, I'm sure more time for you to talk to even more people and um, enjoy the weekend if these meetings were on a Thursday or Friday, so I had to come back in for the money to get that down. So I, I don't see any questions here um, yet from anyone else, but if you do have a question, we do have some time, uh, submit them below and then we'll ask Wesley here live today. But um, just Wesley, what, what are some of the, the other learnings that you've gotten from this and how has the, the communication with your team members um, improved just from doing these kinds of uh, exercises with them? Yeah, thanks for asking. So one of the other challenges that we had was because we split the group into two different places, um, basically people were working in their own isolated space and we wanted to make sure that the data that people were collecting in their isolated space was being shared back to everyone. And so we were very intentional about setting the norms. We're like, hey, every morning, midday and end of day, we're going to sync up on what were the biggest things uh, and the biggest key learnings that we had. And we were very intentional about like facilitating that conversation. So then it didn't drag on and on. It was just short and sweet and say, these were the big three things. I am blocked like in this way, I need help doing this. And then we were able to basically turn on a dime and just reallocate our resources very, very quickly and very easily. And I think showing that ability to like respond and turn on a dime was something that really impressed our stakeholders and users because most of these folks, they're used to being told, oh, that's a really tough problem. We'll get to it in a couple months. And the entire time, you know, the monitor's saying, well, that's nice and all, but I've got like 300 more people waiting in line. I can't wait. So like, and so being able to say that, hey, we're gonna work on this and this is a high priority item, we'll get a fix to you right away that gave them the confidence that the my career team has my back and the my career app is reliable and I can trust my work with it. Um, I actually forgot to share a story. Um, while we were out there in that trip, we actually did suffer an outage multi uh, two times, actually. It was pretty stressful, not gonna lie, uh, because it started out with one person saying, hey, I'm having some troubles hitting the website. I'm like, okay, what's, can't be that bad. And right when he started just explaining what happened like another dozen people like did the like awkward like looking around like raising their hand and making eye time eye contact with me and i thought oh no this is not one person this is everybody and being able to 
because we normed and practice how we're going to respond to the situation of the thrash was wasn't as bad and we were basically able to just handle that swarming with grace with professionalism say hey thank you so much for sharing we know what the problem is we're going to work on this and we had a fix uh in production in about 43 minutes and i think that was a huge part in the user adoption because not only does the app work but when it doesn't it's going to get fixed while i am out there so they had that trust um yeah that's it thanks yeah excellent story to show the the agile um working environment that you guys help cultured and how it, you're able to get things back up and running yeah. my next question is going to be um how can folks reach out to you if they had more questions but i see that here on the slide so if you have any questions or would like to reach out to Wesley directly, it looks like he left his email and his LinkedIn address there. So feel free to reach out to him there. And it doesn't look like we have any other questions here. Wesley, do you, any closing thoughts before we um, end today's call? Uh, let's see. I mean, thank you so much for, for the opportunity to share what we've learned because, um, yeah, the Marine Corps is a very special place. And to have the opportunity to really, like, impact uh tons of people's lives in some way and help them get to where they need to be with this product it is definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity that i'm very thankful for and it was a pretty wicked hard problem but like by harnessing the minds together it was a very rewarding experience and yeah and thank you so much for hosting today for giving me the opportunity and that's it thanks Excellent. Thank you, Wesley, for joining us today. Uh, for all of you guys for listening here live, for those in the future listening to this on demand, uh, thank you. Welcome. And uh, thank you for joining us um, whenever you guys are watching this. So this is being recorded, um, has been recorded, and we'll share out the link out to Wesley and to everyone here who is in attendance, also through our social channels as well. If you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to Wesley directly. We hope to see you guys at our next event. Bye, all. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one.